Let me uh, welcome everybody to the uh, Boulder Startup Meetup Group tonight. And uh, we have a presentation by Sky Shadle about uh, Google My Business. And the program is being recorded. And if you don't want to be on screen, you can turn off your camera. If not, uh, you can uh, stay on and, and watch. But I'll turn the program over to Sky. Welcome. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here. Glad to see everyone here. Um, I want to preface this with a couple things. So first and foremost, this is going to be a lot of information to take in within a quick amount of time. So I'll stop after a couple sections periodically and just, you know, pause to see if there are any questions. I want to make sure that any and all questions that you have get answered. Um, I'll go pretty in depth on the profile and go basically like it's a mock profile um, to show you, like I said, optimization from start to finish. And then at the end, go over some maintenance. So let me share my screen here. Okay. Does someone just want to quickly confirm that you can see it? We can, I can see it. Okay. Thanks, there. Thanks, Asa. Awesome. Cool. So um, this is a Google My Business profile. So if you do not currently have a Google My Business profile and you're looking to set one up, You'll just go to business.google.com. And once you get there, you can click sign in. Um, you'll sign in with a Gmail account and then create your Google My Business profile. So this is obviously a test profile that I have here for the Boulder Startup Group. Um, and like I said, we'll go from start to finish on the profile on how to best optimize it. So if you're just getting started, you will see something on the top here saying your edits won't appear on Google unless you verify your business. If you've already verified your business, um, you will not see this to give just a quick explanation of what the verification process looks like. Google will use either a mailing address um, or they'll do a video verification for your profile. Basically, this is just ensuring that you own the business, um, that you're you know, trying to edit on Google and to get it live on both search and maps results. Verification will do that. Typically, it takes about three to five days to get that postcard. Once you get that postcard, you'll just enter the code into your profile and then it will go live onto search results and maps. So business name, um, pretty straightforward, pretty obvious there. You're going to want that to be consistent, you know, across the board just for branding purposes. So the same as your website, um, you know, ideally the same as your social channels, all that stuff. Next is category selection. So I've chosen software company here um, just to have a place filler. If you are, you know, a real estate agent, you can put real estate agency, real estate agents, real estate attorney, if you are that. There's a lot of different options in here. You'll see that they're all pre-populated. So you'll want to make sure to select one from here. If you type in one on your own and hit apply, it won't go. Um, so I recommend adding, you know, at least the primary category there. Say this was a real estate agency. And in the additional categories here, something that's going to be pretty important that is often overlooked is going to make sure that you include any and every applicable category here. So like I said, Obviously, real estate agents would go along with real estate agency. If you go in here a little bit more, there's school, attorney, surveyor, appraiser, developer, any and everything here that's applicable to your business that you may offer, you wanna make sure to include. One really important detail about the category selection is that only the primary category is customer facing. This is the only thing that will ever be shown on Google. Additional categories are never going to be shown on Google itself, but rather they're for the back end of Google to give Google a better idea of what your business is, who you serve, and to help you to show up for more results. Any questions on that before I move on? Okay. So next is gonna be location. Um, so depending on your business, you'll want to either set up a physical location if you have a brick and mortar store or a service area. Um, typically, you know, it just depends on your business. A photography company, for example, would typically be a service area. So you can set that service area to be as you wish. Um, you can choose up to 20 different areas that you service. So Boulder being one, obviously, you know, if you wanted to put Denver in here, you're able to do that as well. Only include areas that you do serve. What this is going to do is instead of having a physical pinpoint location on either a map search or on the Google search itself, this is going to add a radius around the area that you serve to better show, you know, where you will travel to. Next are hours of operation. Pretty standard. You'll click the day. You'll put your open at, closes at. 
One recommendation is to never have 24 hours. This is an option. Um, this is not recommended. The reason being is that, you know, consumers want to see when you're open and know when you're available to call, to book an appointment, those types of things. So definitely don't put 24 hours. You'll want to have actual hours of operation, whether that be the standard nine to five and eight to four, whatever that looks like for your business, you'll want to make sure to include in here. After you've added in your hours, one section that we won't see here that typically is here is special hours. So once you have the hours complete, what you're able to do is add in special hours, quote unquote, for any major holidays, any days that you might be out of office if you're an independently owned business, um, any days that your business is not actually in service, you're able to add to Google and what that will do. We'll put a definitive yes or no open. Um, or yes or no closed on major days such as holidays. Again, those days that you may not be operational. Does that all make sense? Okay, cool. Next is the phone number, pretty straightforward. Um, you'll want that to be consistent across the board just for SEO purposes. Google does index your website, Facebook, Yelp, Instagram, and they compare and contrast this information with that. So the more Consistent the information is across the board, um, the more likely it's going to be that you're recognized as a legitimate and credible business and you're going to show up higher and higher in Google search results just with that consistency. Next is your website. Um, one important thing that a lot of people don't notice here is that the S typically goes missing for a secure site. If your site is secure, typically it's recommended just to add it in there um, just to make sure and again having that S the secure tag. Um, adds a little bit of credibility to Google there. Products and services, I will dive into a little bit later on here. We'll skip them for now um, and get back to them a little bit later because they're pretty in depth. Next are going to be attributes from the business. So you can let people know basically, you know, different qualities and characteristics about your business in this section. This section will change depending on that category selection. So from earlier, like I said, we have real estate agency here. Because this is a real estate agency, we have the following options. If you're a restaurant, for example, you would have some options regarding happy hour, if you serve alcohol, if there's a bar, if there's you know special events, those types of things would be in this section as well. One thing that's important to note that a lot of people get confused with is that a plus sign doesn't mean that it's on your business, but rather once you click it, it'll turn to a check mark and then it'll show on your profile. If you click it one more time, it'll say you're not. Um, typically, you don't want to have the not on here just because it doesn't do anything for Google's purpose. Um, typically, you just either leave it as is or identify with that characteristic and then hit apply once you have everything properly selected. Okay. Next is your business description. So brief description of your business. You have 750 characters here. Typically, I would say it's best to utilize around 500 to 600 of those characters. Um, the first 350 are gonna populate on the actual search results itself. So anything after that, they would have to click more to see the rest of it. One really important detail is in this section here, you wanna make sure to include any and every keyword about your business. So keywords are something that we'll get into a little bit later on in the profile, um, but this is gonna be the first place that keywords are really, really important. So. With that being said, what keywords might look like for you as a real estate agent could be foreclosures, could be, I don't know, you know, open houses, real estate market, real estate signing, those types of things. Um, you're going to also want to include your location in here. So for example, Boulder Startup Group is a real estate agency located in Boulder, Colorado. We are proud to be serving blah, 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 continue on and Im implement all of those keywords there. Um, this is a place to give a brief description of your business. Obviously, you don't want to go too in depth, but think of this as a quick little elevator pitch for your business. So if someone reads this, they understand who you are, what you do, who you serve, and how it works. And you'll always want to end this with a call to action. So that call to action can be whatever you choose, um, but you'll want to have something along the lines of visit our website today to learn more, give us a call to learn more, something along those lines just to have a strong call to action so that customers are um, enticed to take that action. Awesome. Opening date um, is going to be the last part of this puzzle here in the info section. So opening date is going to be simply the date that you open. So you don't need to have the actual date specifically, just the year and the month are required. 
Um, what this does is Google, if it is a new business, will mark your business. It'll give it like a little flag that says this is a newly opened business, support this business. Um, if not, again, just adds a little bit of credibility to the business and allows for Google and customers to know when you opened. Okay. Any questions thus far? I'll pause for a second and see if there are any questions on any of that. Yeah, I've got a question for you. Sure. Um, I've been in business for a long time, a couple of decades or something, but since I just moved back to Boulder, then I had to start up a business here. So my date of business opening is quite different from my experience level. What would you do in there? Yeah, so can I ask what um, what is your business? I'm a geek. I go to people's homes individually and help them out with all their technology. I make their equipment talk nicely to each other and help them work with it. Awesome, yeah. So what I would do in that instance, um, I would recommend adding the actual opening date of your business in Boulder to the profile. And then in the business description, I would add, you know, with over 30 years of technology experience, I'm proud to serve clients by et cetera, et cetera, and mm -hmm. include that experience aspect into the business description itself. It's going to do two things. One, it makes it tangible for clients and it get, adds again, more credibility. They can see that you are obviously well versed in your field. Um, and two, it legal issues shouldn't arise, but if there were any legal issues to arise with the quote business name and the opening date, you just mm -hmm. wanna make sure that those are consistent with what you have as far as like your incorporation date or your date of your LLC or anything like that. Okay, one other question then. Mm -hmm. um, I started with one name, but I couldn't get the .com. So I switched names. I think it stayed the same as far as the Secretary of State part but of course it's a different name and I'm not sure then on that, what does my business date say? That's a good question. Um, yeah, so as far as that goes for Google My Business specifically, they simply check the name against the domain name. Um, so as long as your domain name, your.com is similar or the same as your name on Google My Business, you should be good there. Okay, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. I have a question. I had, a, I used to, my office used to be downtown here and I don't know if it was nefarious or if someone was just trying to be helpful, but they said I, my business was closed at the location. Mm. And, and so what that did was it disabled my whole, my whole profile. And I had to go through just a big pain in the butt to try to get reestablished. And so is there a way to lock it, lock the profile so no one can give their opinion other than I suppose a review, I don't know. Yeah, it's a really good question. I wish the answer was yes. Unfortunately, the answer is no. Um, I actually just dealt with that with a client. Someone made you know a false edit essentially to their profile and we got in touch with Google and got it resolved pretty quickly um, just because we're a Google agency, but it is a pain and it is a hassle, but to keep Google, um, you know, the information as accurate as possible, they want to allow for, individuals to come in and make suggestions to your profile. So what happens currently, um, when was that, Alan, that that happened? It was a couple of years ago? Like a year ago. Actually, okay. it happened a couple of years ago. And I just, after I, after we met, whenever that was a couple months ago, I kind of went back into it. That's when I discovered it. Okay. And so yeah. it's, been, it's been problematic for like years. Okay. Yeah. So what it typically will say um, now within the last year, what it will do is say, it looks like you have edits to your business on the top in yellow here that will come up. It'll say either Google or another source has made edits to your business. And then in this info section here, whatever they edited, whatever they made for the suggested change is going to show up in yellow. So for example, if we had appointment required on here and appointment was actually mm -hmm not required or someone marked it as not required, what it would do would cross this out in yellow. And it would say that that was the change and you could either accept the changes um, or you could rebuke them and file just a quick claim with Google to let them know, hey, we actually do require appointments. I see, so it's more two way than it used to be. Yep, it is, yeah, absolutely. Cool, good questions. Any other questions before we move on here? Okay, cool. 
So insights is the next tab here. Um, because this profile is, ver is not verified, this one will not have insights. However, to give you an idea of what insights are, you can see them within your own Google My Business profile. This is going to be data on your profile. So this is going to be data that shows how many search results you showed up for within the past month, how many maps, maps, maps results, <laughs> excuse me, you showed up for within the past month, how many views your photos got, how many people clicked on your website, how many people called you, how many people requested directions, if that's applicable, you'll be able to see all of that data within here. You can track it on a monthly basis, the past week or the past quarter, if you wish. Um, and, you know, once you go through and do optimization on your profile and continue maintenance. I would recommend tracking these insights. Typically it'll take about three to four months to start seeing some big growth on Google My Business. The reason being is that everything is organic and your profile will be competing against profiles that may have been active or may have been fully optimized um, you know, for months or years even. And so it will take a little bit of time, but three to four months um, typically is when you start to see some big traction with Google My Business. All right. We'll go into reviews here. Um, again, because this listing is unverified, you can't see any reviews, but I do wanna comment on reviews. One thing that's gonna be really important with Google My Business is making sure that number one, you are receiving reviews. So I would recommend review solicitation. Um, you have a handy little tool here on your homepage. Here's a little secret, and it's gonna be a quick review link. So if you scroll down, you'll see here, you need to verify it. Once you've verified your business, you'll have, it'll say, get your first review or manage reviews, something along those lines. And what it's gonna do, this button will change to a review link button. And once you click it, it's going to have a link that sends people directly to your profile and automatically toggles them to leave you a review. So you can send that in a quick review solicitation email. Um, you know, if you use SMS marketing, you can do so with a quick text after the appointment, after the product is finalized, whatever that might look like. You know, hey Sky, thanks so much for optimizing my Google My Business profile. If you wouldn't mind leaving me a quick review, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and like I said, that link is really handy because it takes people directly to your public profile and automatically toggles them to leave you a review. So reviews are going to be important for a multitude of aspects. Um, obviously, just for credibility and consumers' eyes, reviews are important. They're also really important for keywords for Google specifically. So if you have specific keywords that you want to show up for, you can ask your clients, customers, et cetera, to leave those keywords in their reviews. So if you're a photographer and want to show up for wedding photography or portraits or sports photography, and you want to show up for, you know, one of those three things or all three of those things, you can ask your client actually to use those keywords in your review. And what that's going to do is add tags to your profile. I can show a quick example of what that looks like here. So if we see here, this is a mobile bike shop um, in Dallas, Texas, and you'll see they have bike shop, convenient house, professional, future van. Some of these aren't incredibly applicable. However, bike shop, convenient, these are keywords that they would want to be showing up for. And so by responding to these reviews with keywords as well, we give Google just another chance to allow us to show up for those keywords here. The responses to the reviews will not be a part of this on the top. This is simply pulled from the different reviews that you have. However, this is important for the back end of Google because the more places that you have those keywords on your profile, the more likely they're going to be to understand you for those keywords and to show you up and to show your profile for those relevant searches. Okay, any questions about reviews before we move on? Okay, so messaging is a feature um, you need to verify in order to have messaging, but this is a feature solely available through the Google My Business app. So the Google My Business application is available on both iOS and Android devices, and this is not available on desktop. Um, what this does is it adds a quick little, um, I guess, section to your profile on mobile only that says message this business. I will say that out of the clients that I work with, um, I have one client who has messaging turned on. Their profile gets about 10,000 views a month um, and they get a message once every eight months probably. So messaging, I would not say is critical by any means. Um, I would actually advise against messaging. The reason being is like I said, people really don't use it. And it's just another area to check. It's another place to keep looking for messages. It's another place to keep track of instead of just sending people directly to your website, having them call you, et cetera. 
Okay. Photos, we'll get back to in a minute. I'll do posts and photos together. Um, so we'll dive into products and services here. But any questions about messaging before I move on? I think it's pretty straightforward, but okay, cool. So products, again, you need to verify. You can tell that Google really wants you to verify your business for everything, of course. Um, once you verify your business, you don't have any issues with any of that. But the product section is going to be a section that actually shows publicly on your profile. So even if you are a service business, a service-based business, you may have the product section available. You may not. Um, it's going to depend on that category selection again. So that category selection under info where we currently have real estate agency, this product section is going to be very upon that. Um, products are going to be added to your profile in the following manner. So you'll wanna make sure you always include a photo. It's not required. However, I would always recommend adding a photo to the product itself or the service. Again, if you have services, you can list them in here. So we can go with, um, let's do like professional headshots for this one, if I were a photographer. So you would upload a photo of a professional headshot or of a studio. You would put the name as professional headshots. Select a category. You'll always want to create a category. And this here um, is going to be a general broad term that might include several products or several services. So here I would put photography services. Oops. You can add the price if you want to. It's optional. You can also range if you want to. That's optional as well. Um, depends on, you know, your comfortability. If pricing is something that people do not inquire about and is listed explicitly on your website, I would recommend adding pricing here. If you have an inquire for pricing model, I would recommend leaving it out to, for the sake of consistency. Product description is again, an optional feature. However, this is a feature that you will always want to include. So you'll always want to make sure that you are filling this out completely, um, with again, location-based tags, any keywords that are applicable to this specific service. Um, and a call to action at the end of it. So again, this is another area that you can have a call to action on your profile and you'll want to make sure to add a button to follow along with that call to action. So whether that call to action is learn more by order online, whatever you want to use for that call to action, you'll want to make sure, like I said, that you have a call to action written in the end here that's congruent with the add a button and then the link for your button as well. You want to link to your website appropriately. As far as services go, um, like I said, you'll want to select a category and I would recommend having your categories to be pretty specific um, for your business. So if you only have, you know, if you're a photographer and you only have photography services, that's okay. Just have the one category. If you have multiple, then have multiple categories. Um, there's no set rule, rhyme or reason as to how many categories you should have or shouldn't have. It's really just variant upon your business. However, again, just to emphasize, it is really, really important to include those keywords in the product description here and to always include a call to action to make sure that customers are able to get to your website, call you, whatever you want that call to action to look like. Awesome. Like I said, again, this shows publicly on the profile. Um, this is customer facing on both mobile and desktop versions. I had a quick question. Yes. Um, so, should we be listing our services as services and also as products? Yes. So if you are a service-based business, um, even if you're a product-based business, yes, you will be including them in both for two reasons. One, consistency with keywords. So the more places that Google sees these keywords on your profile, again, the more likely they're going to be to recognize you for said product or service, and the more likely they're going to be to show you for related searches. Um, and the second piece of that is that products is entirely customer facing, like I said. So this is always going to show on both mobile and desktop. Services is not. Services shows about 15% of the time and only on mobile searches. Why does it show 15% of the time? Your guess is as good as mine. I wish I had an answer to that. I've asked Google multiple times and there's really no straightforward answer there. Um, that's just known across the board is that typically services, you will never see them on desktop and sometimes on mobile, they might show up. Um, services is a place that we'll go to next. And that's where you want to list out any and every iteration of exactly what you offer. Um, the reason being that it's really, really important more so for Google's backend than it is for the customer side itself. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Cool. Other questions about products or, or products, I guess, before we move on to services? 
Okay, cool. All right, so services, like I said, will show up um, about 15% of the time on mobile only. So I wouldn't worry too much um, about what you have in here as far as like different iterations. I would actually recommend, like I said, that you do have any and every iteration of what you offer in here. The reason being that Google crawls all of this information and will pull every keyword from here and will understand that as a part of your business. So you really wanna make sure to fill this out entirely with every iteration of what you offer. You'll see here, for example, Google's gonna give you some suggested services um, with what you offer. To give an example of what an iteration looks like, you'll have something like real estate appraisal singular, real estate, oops, sorry, I broke my uh, left wrist, so typing is a <laughs> little tricky. Um, real estate appraisals, if I could spell, that would be wonderful. Um, and then just having, you know, appraisal, singular. So you'll want to include every iteration here. The reason being, again, is that Google crawls all of this information um, to match your profile with applicable searches. So this is where you want to go crazy. This is where you want to put, you know, if you're a video producer, you want to put video production, production of videos. <laughs> it seems counterintuitive and it seems like, why would I add, you know, things that may not make sense to me, but people might be typing them into Google. So any and every applicable search that someone might type into the search engine, you'll want to include in this section. One thing to know is that this is broken up by category. So if you have one category, you'll only have one section. If you have multiple, which like I suggested, I would recommend having multiple, you'll have services under each category. Um, really tedious, really painstaking. However, I do recommend adding in your specific services under each of those different categories. The reason being is that Google associates that specific service with that category. And so by having it again in another place, it's just another place that Google will pull that keyword, recognize it with the category and then overall with your profile. What about misspellings? Should you type in other people's possible misspellings? Good question. I recommend not to type in misspellings. Um, the reason being is that Google crawls all of this information, like I said, and they do take a pretty in-depth look at the profiles. Um, misspellings are typically associated with spam, more or less. Um, and so Google might then mark your profile for spam, and that's something that you definitely don't want to happen. They might suspend your listing. Um, and then it's a whole process to get it reinstated. So I would recommend, again, away from misspellings. Um, but it is a really good question there and a really good point to bring up. Thank you. How did you learn all this? Yeah, I've been working um, with Google My Business and local SEO for the past three years. I've been a, started out as a small business consultant um, and then went off and started my own company. And this is what we do. So we do fully manage Google My Business services. So we do everything for our clients. They just add us as a user um, and we do all the optimization, all the maintenance and all that stuff for them. Thank you for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for being here. I love to spread the wealth. So awesome. Any other questions before we move on? Would you put in um, like just the words, like if I was going to do like home value or would you do like what they would type? What is my home worth? Great question. Just the words. Um, so questions again might be marked as spam by Google. Um, not guaranteed, but again, it could be a red flag and we want to stay away from any potential red flag there. So to keep everything consistent in line with Google's guidelines, only words and only keywords, um, question marks and things along those lines will immediately be, be um, flagged as spam. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Anything else with services? I know that this goes pretty in depth. Um, so anything else before we move on here? I do have a quick question, actually. So, sure. so much of what SEO is, is beating out your competitors showing up first. And in Google My Business, whoever's at the top of that My Business list is at the top of the top of the top. Mm -hmm. So is there a way to like analyze your competitors' pages and do better than them? Yeah, really good question. Um, so the Insights tab, like I was telling you, this will give you a little bit of data um, on how you're performing against your competitors, specifically with photo views, it'll tell you, you versus businesses like yours. Um, so if you go into this section, it'll give you a little bit of data there. As far as search results, um, you know, profile actions, you know, 
website visits, calls, direction requests, those types of things. Those are going to be variable really depending on the business location and the competitive market. So a massage therapist in the middle of Kansas is going to have a much easier time getting within that three pack or to that top number one spot than a massage therapist in Los Angeles, California, just because of the competitive nature of the Los Angeles market for massage therapy. Um, skincare would be again, a same example there. So as far as like benchmarks for search results go, that's a little bit more difficult to gauge just because it is so variant upon the business and the area that the business is located in. However, Google does give, like I said, a little bit of comparison with the photo views in there. Does that help? Needed. Thank you. Yes, that helps a lot. Okay, cool. I have a question, uh, Sky, if you don't mind. Um, yeah. So I have my business set up through obviously Facebook business page and I have a kind of an ads man manager set up. Mm -hmm. I don't utilize it uh, right now. And then of course I have a Kajabi website and I have the pixel set up for there. I mean, is there ways to set up insights that also track through those pixels? Is that possible through Google as well? Or is that just a completely different thing? So through Google My Business specifically, no. Um, Google My Business is going to, like I said, track website clicks, phone calls, and direction requests. You can set up Google Analytics, and I would highly recommend setting up Google Analytics if you have not done so. That's going to give you some really good hard data on where your clients or where your customers, I should say, are coming from, how much time they're spending on your website, that type of data that you definitely want to know. Um, and that's going to be Google Analytics. So that's a totally separate entity from Google My Business itself. Okay. And is that something that you would connect through Google My Business or is that also connect through, for example, Pixel on my website that's gauging that information separately? Yeah. So Facebook Pixel is going to be separate. Facebook Pixel is its own tracking device. Google Analytics is its own tracking device. Everything is independent of one another. Okay. Um, Google My Business Insights is its own tracking device. So they're all going to be separate entities. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Absolutely. Awesome. Anything else before we move on? I love all these questions. Thank you guys for being so engaged. Okay, cool. All right, so website. Um, if you don't have a domain name, if you don't have a website, you are able to purchase the domain names right through Google. Um, and Google will create a website, quote unquote, for you. This website simply pulls in all of the information from your Google My Business profile. And if you don't have any photos up here, it'll use just this general stock image. Um, updates are gonna be Google posts, testimonials are gonna be through reviews. About us will be um, your business description pulled in. Gallery will be the photos that you have and contact us will be pulled in from your business information as well. So if you don't, excuse me, if you don't have a website and need a quick um, fix to get started, this is definitely something that you can use. Um, the domain name up here, you'll see on the top, boulder-startup-group.business.site. This .business.site is something that will be free, um, so you don't have to actually purchase that domain name itself. If you want to purchase the domain name, you can do so here. You can also purchase a domain name through Google Domains. That's an entirely separate conversation. Um, but if you didn't have a website and wanted a quick fix for that, this would be an option for you. I would recommend against this for SEO purposes. Um, just generally speaking, I would recommend having a domain name specifically and having your website built with specific blogs and um, just a different you know, set of regulations for general SEO, which is different from local SEO. But again, for a quick fix, this works in a pinch um, to get you up and running. Okay, awesome. Um, we'll go into posts and photos in just a second here. I just want to pause really quickly and see if anyone has any questions before we move on. Okay, cool. So Google Posts, this is going to be a unique aspect um, of Google My Business that does not show, um, or that does not, I guess, work in the same fashion, I should say, that social media posts go. So social media posts, you know, you post it and it stays on your profile, it stays live, people can click into it anytime they can see it. Google My Business posts work in a different fashion. So you'll see with COVID, they added a COVID update post. This stays live on your profile for a month. After a month, this will then um, 
to be taken off of your profile and put into an archive section. So here I would highly recommend no matter what your business is to create a COVID update, whether that be that you switch online, whether you're taking precautions using masks, um, temperature checks, et cetera. I would, want, I would definitely recommend including any and every precaution that you're taking within here, as well as adding a call to action. Call to actions are something we'll go into with Google Posts in just a second. Um, but always including a call to action with those Google Posts is going to be important. So that's the COVID update. Um, that obviously is specific and new due to COVID. However, these are going to be the four typical types of posts. So you'll see add offer, add update, add event, and add product. So we'll go into each of them. Um, I'll start with add update. This is going to be the most generic and the most utilized. And I would recommend to utilize this the most um, of Google posts. To give you a quick example, again, on how this works, if we just go back to the profile we were on earlier, if we scroll down, we'll see underneath their description, they have two posts that are currently live. One is an offer post. So this is what that offer post looks like. Like I said, I'll get into the offer post in just a little bit here. Um, but this is what that looks like on the Google My Business profile itself. It shows under the description. Google posts will always show under the description with the exception of the COVID update, which will show right here above the questions and answers. Here's a typical example of a Google post. Um, like I said, something that's really, really important are gonna be keywords throughout your entire profile. Once again, keywords play a huge part in Google posts. So Google posts are important for two reasons. One, they're a sign of activity to Google. Activity is going to be based upon Sorry, photo uploads. I don't have any information about that. <laughs> It's okay, <laughs> my Google's talking to me now. <laughs> um, but Google is going to be basing it upon activity and completeness and accuracy of your profile. So both posts and photo uploads are gonna be signs of activity for Google. So a typical Google post looks like this. This will be live on the profile for seven days and after seven days will disappear into an archive section, this view all section here. So if we click in there, we'll see that there was a previous post from a week ago, a little bit over a week ago that was there, another one down here. So you'll see the archive posts are all within that section there. Like I said, again, these remain on your profile for seven days and then go into the archive posts. So it is recommended to post once per week on the same day for consistency for Google's sake. Um, you always wanna make sure that these posts are complete with a photo. A keyword focused description, keyword focused again being variant depending on your business. So tune up would be one for this one. Bike, Velo Fix Dallas is their business name. Number one, mobile bicycle repair service, repair service, bicycle repair. Those are all kind of combined in together. Dallas Fort Worth area, bike repair, et cetera, et cetera. And again, always complete with a call to action there um, to drive home some traffic. I want to make something really clear here. Google posts are made for Google more so than they are for consumers. So although this is a consumer facing entity on the profile itself, I will say that Google posts typically don't get many views, if any at all. So if you go into your post section of Google My Business and you see that, oh my gosh, my post has only had five views, don't worry, that's pretty standard. Um, typically Google posts, like I said, are not gonna get much traction as far as consumers go. But the reason that they are so important is, again, a huge sign of activity for Google, and it's another place to implement keywords onto your profile. That's going to be the, quote, what's new or add update post. They call it what's new within this section. They call it add update here. Um, can get a little bit confusing, but they're the same thing there. This is what it looks like on your dashboard. So you'll upload a photo or multiple photos if you wish. Write your post, and then again, always include a call to action button here as well questions about the COVID update or the what's new before I move into a different type of post? Yeah, what happens if you just take the same damn thing and just repeat it? Does it not like that? Great question. It's gonna be marked as spam. Um, I wish it wasn't, but again, Google has so many indicators in their system to mark spam. Um, so those keywords, I would say keep a list of keywords that you wanna use in your profile and become creative, um, You know, kind of work, do some magic with the wording there and try to figure out ways to manipulate it to change um, into different variants. Saying the same thing is okay if you have different variations of it. Copying and pasting will be marked as spam. And again, we'll flag your profile and likely get it suspended. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Other questions? This is a pretty important section um, of Google My Business. So please ask any questions you have here. 
<laughs> so Sky, um, I'm just looking in the chat. Nicole says she's having mic issues, but she has a question. Oh, she wants you. she she wants to know what about adding updates that refer to a podcast. Yeah, really good question. Thank you. Um, sorry, Nicole, I didn't see that. I'm sharing my screen, so I don't have those notifications on. So as far as a podcast goes, um, that's something definitely that you would want to promote on here. I would recommend doing it again as that what's new post, always including a photo, and then having that call to action link, learn more, typically I would use for a podcast, and then linking um, the podcast itself into that button or into that description there so that the button will lead there. Um, that's going to be your best option there. If it's a paid podcast and you want to offer a special on it, you can use the offer feature. Um, that's something, you know, that you can just get creative with, but I would say typically for a podcast update, that's going to be a what's new or ad update post. Okay. Awesome. Anything else about posts before I move on? Okay. So the offer posts. Like I was saying, this is going to give you the ability to add an offer or a promotion, if you want to call it, to your profile. This, unlike a what's new post, is going to show live from the start date to the end date of that offer. So you can have this up to, I think, 364 days is the max. So one day lower than a year. Um, you can go through and if you wanted to run, you know, a I don't know, free trial or something like that. You could have that as an offer post um, on your profile and that would stay live at all times. I will say it's always important to have a post live on your profile. However, an offer post being live does not mean that you should neglect the what's new or add update post on a weekly basis. The reason being again is that even though it's still live on your profile, it's not updating, it's not regularly updating those keywords. Um, and regularly letting Google know, hey, the business again is, is saying that they are X, Y, and Z keywords. Um, so I would recommend even when you have an offer live to still remain continuing to post with the what's new posts. Um, as far as the offer goes, pretty straightforward. So photos and offer title, start date, end date, and then any more details that you want to include are available here. Um, I would always recommend having the link to redeem the offer at a minimum and the coupon code as well if there is a coupon code applicable. And then the event post is going to be very similar to the offer post. So same way that the offer post stays live on your profile from the start date to the end date, the um, event post will be the same. So again, this is a great place to include keywords to add any events that you have. You can add the time specifically in here as well. If it's a virtual event, um, I would recommend having you know a sign up button or something along those lines here or learn more um, linking it there. But definitely, again, include those keywords and all details of the event in the description there. Cool. And then product posts are going to be the last here. So as I showed you earlier um, in the product section on the left hand side here, obviously you're able to add these as a customer facing product. If you don't want to add them through the product section and you wanted to add them one by one individually, you're able to do so with the product posts. This simply adds it to, again, that product section, and it also adds it as a post to your profile. I will say, as far as data goes and statistics, there isn't a huge difference between using the product post versus the product section itself. Um, it's pretty much exactly the same. For that reason, I would recommend staying away from the product post and only utilizing, like I said, the other four types of posts. Um, the reason being is that what's new posts really perform incredibly well in Google, as do the event offer and COVID updates. Again, the products post is pretty similar to the same as the product section in Google My Business. So there's not necessarily a need to double up there because they're already going to have that information in the product section itself. If you had a new product that you were launching, that would be a time that I would say you would want to use a product post and let people know that you have a new service offering or a new product that you're offering. Okay, questions on posts before I move into almost the last piece of the puzzle here, photos. Okay, cool. So photos, um, one thing interesting about Google My Business is that you will likely hear a lot of people saying that it's really important that your photos have alt tags and location tags um, and just tags generally with keywords for your business um, in Google. I will tell you that that is not true. So you can use a stock photo and Google will read that the same as they will an organic photo taken at your location with a location tag and keywords in there. 
Google doesn't actually care about any of the data on the photo itself. What they care about is the photos being uploaded. So uploading photos on a weekly basis is what we have found works best for our clients. Um, same as posting photos, a really easy way to do that is take the photo that you use in the post and just reuse it, reduce, reuse, and recycle, and upload it right into this section. Really easy. You can drag and update photos here. Um, one thing that I won't be able to show you because this isn't a verified profile, if you have a photo in here, what will happen is in the top right-hand corner, you'll see a little eye with a circle around it. In that little eye, the letter I, not like an actual I, um, you will see different category selections. So those category selections may look like at work, team, product, um, interior, exterior, those different categories based upon your business vertical, again, the category that you select. And that's a super, super nitpicky detail um, that you would never know to look for, but you'll want to categorize those photos. So you'll want to click if it's an at work photo, click if it's a photo of the team, if it's a photo of the product, et cetera, et cetera. Um, again, that's going to be in the top right hand corner once you click into the photo itself and you'll be able to choose that category there. Okay. Last but not least are users. So you'll see again, this is a test account, um, but you're able to add users here. So if you ever want to add someone to your profile, I'll use my email here as an example. Here I am, you'll just click the person once you find it and then choose their role. So owner, manager, or site manager. Um, you may not have a site manager option. You might just have owner and manager. The difference between these two is pretty minimal. There's a little bit of a learn more section here. Um, a manager can do everything basically that they need to do on your profile. So they'll be able to add posts, update photos, and all of those things. Um, we're added as simply managers onto our client's profiles and able to fully manage their profiles. Um, yeah, so that's about it. <laughs> no, like I said, it's a ton of information to take in um, all within a quick, short amount of time here. So want to open up the floor here um, and see if there are any final questions, comments, concerns, anything along those lines.